Welcome for the listeners. Welcome to the archive. My name is Sierra, and today we have Nick Lovett. Um, they are a writer and visual artist from Oakland. They are the author of the book 21, which was featured in our From Yesterday, For Today, and Always book giveaway. Um, so we're excited to have you. Um, yeah, hey. I, I um, obviously I read the book, and I just, I felt like there was mm. such a calmness and like stillness that needed to happen um a moment of like processing and really sort of sitting with the stories and like reflecting on my own um experiences and while some things are different there are a lot of just like that 20 yeah that 21st year is hectic energy sometimes <laughs> yes like, what is going on um and how there there was just moments i think I can't remember the name right off, but it was like um, something about like how Mary, like it was something about we basically. And, and it was like talking about how this person um, who at the time you were in, in a relationship with, they, you, you, you sort of looked at, looked to them as like, oh, you're, you're so much wiser, you're older. And I think like that feeling is so universal and so like, mm -hmm. we're often looking to other, other people um, as like, you know, and, and like, mm -hmm. I have to figure it out. Like, it's sort of just like not giving ourselves the credit when like, we are really the ones who, who know, <laughs> um, yeah. or like have the, have the skills already. Um, so for you, what, what do you hope people, um, take away from reading your book? Um, well, I really wanted to talk about, like, because I'm not really an open, like, was an open person about these experiences. Um, and also I haven't, I hadn't seen anything in the media that was like it particularly. Um, so I was like, I should write a book. So that's what I did. Um, but yeah, it was also mainly just like, I mean, I didn't really think anyone would read it. <laughs> um, so it was really for like myself. But I was like, towards the end of like writing it, I was like, let me put some more effort into this. Um, but yeah. How do you feel now that people are reading it? And I told you before we started the interview that your book was like one of the most requested. So how, how does that feel for you? It feels, uh, it feels surreal. It feels really nice. Um, it also feels scary um, because I honestly published it kind of impulsively, uh, which I guess you can do. Um, and yeah, but I'm so grateful though. I'm like so happy that it's touched people in so many ways. <laughs> and so many of my friends have got it. People in other countries have gotten it. I'm like, dang, I'm international. <laughs> um so it's 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 cool that people feel seen um because of what i shared for my own life yeah how well you, you sort of talked a little bit about how um you didn't expect people to read it and so it seems that there was more of like a, a personal reflection um but in general what was the process of coming to writing it aside from I, I don't see this and like maybe I should just do it um what what were some of the other steps either personally or like just logistically that you took to create this mm -hmm. well a lot of the poetry here I like was writing over like a period of the year prior like a few years prior um one of the poems is from when I wrote it in high school um, that I just edited a little. So there were those that I was like, cause as things happened to me, I would write prose about them and, and post them on Instagram or just have them for myself. Um, 
but yeah, as my 22nd birthday came up, I was like, I need to do something. Um, I, so I wrote more, so I wrote more intentionally about, um, my experiences with sex work and particularly because, yeah, I hadn't really written about that too much on my own. So that was really cool, uh, and cathartic, but yes. So I basically shuffled together pieces that I wrote from a few years um, before 2019 and then um, and then some intentional writing throughout a month. So it was together for like, I, I played together in like a month and a half, I think, mm-hmm. for like two months, yeah. Well, I do have to commend you. Um, and I say this to a lot of the writers, but I think that like, just by virtue of you choosing and deciding that like, you're going to share yourself um, and you, mm-hmm. you don't know the outcome. You don't know who's going to read. You don't know um, what's the life after, but you know, like, okay, this is what I need for this moment. Um, and I think that that's like, I think that's important. I think that's a brave thing for people to do, for people to like, just mm-hmm. share themselves with, um, with others and like ultimately share themselves with themselves. Yeah. Um, but so th- there were a lot of, um, themes that came up for me while reading this and two of them being mm-hmm. protection and preservation um mm-hmm. and the ways in which we um we have to find different ways to protect ourselves that that are solely for our preservation sometimes we are trying to preserve ourselves as as a means of protection and like sometimes mm-hmm. they're, they're like they're not the same thing sometimes they are the same thing um but i'm curious for you during that time um, of your experience and even now sort of like what are were your definitions um, of protection and preservation and how how have they shifted if at all um yeah i was i think i like was not clear on how to do those things you know like properly um but also I didn't have a lot of choices. So it was like, do I do this bad decision or this bad decision <laughs> um, to try to get a good outcome for myself? And yeah, that's been in like, yeah, I think it's kind of like been an ongoing struggle for me for, I think, a lot of people especially uh black women to figure out because there's like so many roadblocks so many like systemic roadblocks i don't have the money i don't have um the hair type i don't have the skin color i don't have you know the qualifications because i was like busy being depressed (laughs) Um, but, yeah, I, now I think after going through that chaos, um, there's still chaos and, you know, it's chaotic time, but, um, I'm learning to be more intentional with how I move through the world and, you know, how I um, carry myself and you can't help it when, you can't help it sometimes when shit hits the fan because it was, shit was meant to hit the fan because they threw the shit at the fan, but you know, yeah, I hope that made sense. No, that's a word. (laughs) Fact, like, you can't control it. And I I think that like, that's embodied in in your last uh, poem, 21. I th- mm-hmm. the fact that like you talk about one day this will be a memory one day um like sort of like this this two shop has sort of like mantra um and knowing that like okay this happened wasn't always the most pleasant but like I now have all these skills I and, and sometimes it comes an unfortunate sort of like 
damn, I wish I didn't have to acquire the skill in this way. <laughs> or like, I wish uh -huh. it could have just been a little bit more like, like grounded or something. Um, but then like you do acquire those skills and that um, sort of, that fact of like, now I'm here and like, now I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not where I was. I, I do have a little bit more to me. I do have a little bit more awareness and like understanding of myself and, and I can change, you know, I can make a different decision if this is presented in the future. Um, and I think a lot of those poems in the, in the book, it really like reifies this sort of like acceptance and choice making like, mm -hmm. okay, this happened. Now, now what do I do? How do I respond? Um, and really mm -hmm. like taking back, like reclaiming ownership of like, your life, your path, um, the experiences yeah. that you want. And so, yeah, that was, I love that. <laughs> I love um, this. What were there, or are there any sort of um, values or skills or just ideas um, that you learned along the way um, that you would, I don't know if suggest or like advice would be the best way. I don't know um how you feel around like giving advice to people because sometimes that can be a little like I don't even have it together myself but mm -hmm. are there any sort of like um ideas or skills that you picked up along the way that you think um folks should be like intentional about cultivating as as a means of like protecting and like keeping themselves grounded and like safe in in, in what's necessary for them um that's a good question. Yeah. Um, definitely depends on the person. I definitely think that um, as time goes on, you always have to be looking at different coping mechanisms and different ways to use different coping mechanisms. And giving yourself space to breathe. Cause I for real forget that I can breathe sometimes. Um, and that's a lot of tension in the body. We hold a lot of our, we are able to hold a lot of our trauma in our body and that ends up coming up in physical pain and more mental pain and more distress. Um, so, yeah, when they say self-care, sometimes it means some hardcore shit, uh, <laughs> like, sitting with that, but it's, like, it's so necessary if, like, you want to stop being chaotic, basically, and, um, or if you just want to be more present, and be able to, you know, make whatever you make and help whoever you can help. So yeah, I hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, this is a question that I have been asking a lot of the, the writers, um, mm -hmm. but I also want to sort of like amend it a little because it came up for me when I was reading uh, your work around purpose and like, defining your own purpose um mm -hmm. and so the first part of the question is who are you choosing to be next but then the other part is sort of what do you feel your purpose is um either in this work or in this life or however you define that what do, what do you feel um is for you um yes i okay what was the first part of the question again <laughs> sorry <laughs> <laughs> who are you choosing to be next who am I choosing to be next? Yes. Um, well, I want to be someone who is, I, I am bringing spirit, spirituality into my life. I am bringing more community into my life. I'm bringing more intention and compassion into like, everything I do and I want to be someone who 
of course is an artist but is also just like this really rounded healthy happy person who is just like a good energy if I can be a, a good energy to my friends and I can be and I could give good energy to my art and if I give good energy to my art then the people who view my art will be like this is some good energy <laughs> um so yeah I'm just there's a lot of centering going on for people right now and I because there has to be because there's just like so much chaos externally internally you're just like Dang, what's the point? But there's a lot of points, actually. Um, so there's that. And yeah, I think I don't see myself. I mean, honestly, like a few months ago, I was like, man, I'm going to delete my Instagram <laughs> and I'm not going to write anymore. Um, but I think that I will always be doing some type of writing or media art. Um, I think that I will always be wanting to help my community and boost sex worker voices and boost Black people's voices and Black joy and abundance because black people deserve abundance okay um i yeah so yeah i feel like my purpose i was playing my friend yeah i feel like my purpose is basically just um to i feel like my art is a gift and i feel like based on feedback from people i feel like they kind of need it i feel like yeah, there's not enough sensitivity in art and pop culture and stuff, especially for Black films. So, yeah. I love that. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, I know that you would like to read some of your work, um, but before that, are there any sort of um, like different projects or anything new that you're working on that you would like to share and then we can go into um, reading some of your work. Um, yes. So I'm opening a shop by February. I gave myself a deadline. I <laughs> already got the products. I just need, um, you know, it's going to, I'm going to sell the shirts. They're really good shirts. So I'm going to do that. And um yeah, I don't know, just taking it like day by day, but I do want to um, start writing another body of work and get feedback from people on a rolling basis. So watch out for that, because I will post about it. <laughs> awesome, that's exciting. Um, congratulations also for like starting a business. That's, whoa. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you would like to read an excerpt or two um, from your book 21, please do so. Um, again, thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing. Thank you for having me. Uh, I think I'm going to read... No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay, I will read the entire world. I hadn't been hospitalized in a psychiatric facility since I was 17. At 21, I went back two times in the span of six months. This is how it generally went. I would be waiting in the emergency room for a short time before being taken into my own room and having most of my things confiscated including my clothes for my own safety. Q waiting for a mental health professional to assess if I was suicidal enough to be admitted to a psychiatric facility. After seeing me sobbing about my breakups, my job losses, and how I wanted to fling myself in front of trains, I would pass the test. 
and then being escorted into an ambulance by young, awkward, inexperienced paramedics who are terrible at small talk. The actual facility reminds one of something like a college dorm, except with bigger rooms and staff hovering over you in the name of safety. And instead of tired and starving college students, there were bored patients wanting to go home and others spending the duration of their stay depressed in bed to the protest of staff working the floor. And so it goes. As the paramedics left me and the door behind them closed, locking me from the outside, I felt the weight of my decision to admit myself to a psych ward. After most of my things were confiscated and gently locked away, I sat on my bed and sobbed. My chest heaving and my eyes tightened into pathetic crumbles. It felt as if the entire Pacific was exploding within me. My roommate looked unkindly as the waves crashed. One of the staff members asked why I was crying and I didn't respond. For the, speed, for the sea doesn't speak through you, only drowns your lungs. And I think I was crying because I was tired. It wasn't just my heartbreak. It was the culmination of the entire year and the years before that, crushing my spirit. It was the entire world. When I read that, I was like, damn. Damn, you know, like, that's real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, deeper than you know, um, but... Thank you for sharing that. Um, where can the people find you and connect with you and keep up with your work? Okay, I'm on Instagram mainly. That's where I post uh, like almost every day, multiple times a day in my stories every day. Uh, uh, at Black Girls Are God. That's all one word. Um, and I'm on Spotify. Black, black girls are God. That's the same word because branding. And <laughs> yeah, I have YouTube too and SoundCloud and Twitter, but I don't use it. So maybe don't follow me there yet. <laughs> um, also, y'all can follow us at Dig3X um, and just keep up with Nick. Like, they're doing amazing things. Um, again, thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for your book. Um, thank you for like reading. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Excited. Thank for you. So great. I love this.